good morning to all of you. Now I am going to present you all the third lecture, my third lecture. I am going to share my slide. This is a very interesting topic. I am going, going to give a lecture. So this is the topic of my third lecture is space weather events and its effect on the upper atmosphere. So what is space weather is a very important. My talk is divided into different topics. I will give you a brief introduction about the space weather. Then we will talk about the space weather events. I will show you some interesting videos of the space weather events. And then we will talk about the effect of space weather events. What are the facilities available to Banaras University Department of Physics? I will show you. And then I will show you some of the interesting results of the space weather events. So the results are characteristic of atmospheric irregularities during active solar and geomatic periods. We will talk about the response of ionosphere during intense solar flares. And also I will show you some results of this response of ionosphere during geomagnetic storms. And then we will come to the conclusion. So first of all, we have to know what is space weather. A space weather is the variation in the solar energy emission, prominences, solar flares, and coronal mass injections. And this different solar wind effects, matosphere, ionosphere, and ionosphere. It means the space between the sun and earth, which is influenced by the space weather parameters and which affects the space borne and ground based technological systems. Thus, Space weather is recognized as the cause of significant errors experienced by the global satellite navigation system (GNSS) and GPS, satellite-based augmentation system, and their users. So, space weather is a very important hot topic nowadays, which is affecting our satellites, which is affecting our day-to-day -day life, which is affecting our technology systems also. So, space weather starts from sun and interior. This is the video you will show here. This is this solar interior and here in the center nuclear fusion reaction is going on two hydrogen combined to form helium and this emits a lots of energy in the form of gamma radiation when it goes this is the second layer which is known as radiative zone in which the different radiations going to change their paths then we go to the third layer which is called a radiative zone and third layer is known as convection zone where convecting cycles are moving. So different convection cycles are moving here and the different types of plasma rotates from inner to upper. And when we go to the upper atmosphere of the sun there is a different types of activity which is sun spots two pairs of sunspot, different are prominences are seen here, different types of flares are seen, different types of coronal mass injection. So this is the interior of the sun and the solar activity starts from the interior and it goes to the surface. So this is a very interesting phenomena which occurs inside the solar surface. So solar active regions are nothing but the sunspot. Sunspots are nothing but polar and darker regions shown on the solar disk, this is the solar surface which is known as photosphere and you will see that the dark regions, these are the sun spots. The dimension of this dark region are very large, they are very from 10,000 kilometer to 30,000 kilometer. So you can see the sun, the earth, which is the earth can easily go inside the sun spots. They are so big, they look cooler because their temperature is less than the surrounding. The surrounding temperature is around 5800 and they are around 3000 Kelvin, so they look cooler. And there is a magnetic field, they are dominant region with the solar magnetic field. The magnetic field flux coming from inside and it comes outside, so they are active regions. Another active region is the solar flare. Solar flares occurs when there is a group of sun spots occurs and the plasma moves from the lower surface to upper surface and they curl and fold and they release as a huge energy in few minutes. In just five minutes, large number of energy is emitted in the whole solar system, which is known as solar flares. And the coronal mass injection, 
when the solar flares, sun spots, prominences, and jets were occurs, coronal mass ejection will be seen. Large number of ions and electrons are emitted, which is known as coronal mass ejection because corona is the outer atmosphere of the sun. So you will see that influence the solar system. And if there is a Earth or planet are in this path of this coronal mass ejection, they are influenced by the energetic particle coming from the sun, and this is known as solar radar. So if you see the magnetic loops, so there are satellite image, this is the trash satellite image, and you will see the large numbers of active regions are there, and group of sunspots are seen. Plasma is going from one sunspot to the sunspot, and they are crossing each other, they curl and fold, and this upper, upper envelope you will see, this all will be joined together, and magnetic reconnection, they join, and they will be released. So large numbers of energy is released from sun to the outer atmosphere of solar system. So solar cell flares are most devastating phenomena. There is a sudden explosive release of energy. Up to 10 to the power 26 joule energy is released. And this energy is not only in the radiation. There is a gamma radiation. There is a X radiation. Apart from the X radiation and gamma radiation, there are particles. So if you see the big uh, prominences and flares, a large number of plasma is emitted. You will see the size. The size of the Earth is very small and the size of these prominences are very large. 5,000 to 10,000 kilometer size. So these are the magnetic loops and the release of plasma and energy in the whole solar system. When they come around Earth, they affect our whole Earth, near Earth environment and geomagnetic storm will occur around the earth magnetic field. So I will try to explain you what is the connection between sun and earth. So this is the active sun. When sun is active and lots of uh, plasma is released from here, they come to the earth. Earth has a dipole magnetic. We know that there is a north pole here and south pole here. Magnetic lines are coming from here. Initially it is a dipole, but when solar particle will come, it is not only a particle, they are ionized plasma with magnetic field. So they are called magnetized plasma but so these magnetized plasma when come and compress the earth so earth magnetic field which is a dipole in nature is compressed so day side magnetic field lines are compressed and night side are elongated and stretch so there is a cavity is formed which is known as magnetosphere magnetosphere is basically a earth near environment and which is covered by the earth magnetic field influenced by the earth magnetic so when the solar particle wants to enter, they are not able to enter directly from the they will be scattered in all direction. But from the night side, they enter and they gyrate along the geomagnetic field lines and they reach the atmosphere. So you will see this is the particle coming along geomagnetic field lines and they are reaching. So they form a plasma sphere and a whole cavity is known as magnetosphere. There is a formation of bow shock, there is a polar cusp region, there is a plasma sphere, there is a magnetosheath region, magnetosheath region, and the magnetopause is the boundary of this magnetosphere. So our life is safe due to this magnetosphere. Otherwise, the solar wind particle will come and penetrate into our body and it will damage our rapture, our DNA, and our life will be very difficult. That's why when you are going to the moon, where there is no magnetic field, the pl plasma particle coming from sun will enter, and anybody like an Ian Strong or any scientist, when they are landing on moon, they have to wear a special type of dresses and do. So astronauts will also go to space, and they have to wear a special type of dresses because the high energy particle coming from sun will destroy their DNA, and their life will be dangerous. So magnetosphere makes our life easier, and this magnetic field of the earth will be changed. You will see from this dipole region to this, this is changing. So earth is influencing our earth magnetic. So I will show you some videos I, I have promised initially. I will show you video and you will see how this earth interaction. So this is the active sun and you will see the active sun, the solar particles are emitted in this form of coronal mass injection. And these particles goes in the whole solar system and they influence the near environment. And when they come to the earth, they interact with the earth magnetic field. Some of the lines will be broken and merged and they go to the night side. And these particles enter from the night side and they come along the geomagnetic field lines 
in the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere and they produce aurora that is known as aurora borealis i will say so you again this video is very interesting video this was the near earth interaction sun to the earth how solar particle enters the earth magnetic field so the particle which is ions and electron mostly it is a hydrogen ion and the electrons and some helium ion also they come near the earth there is a magnetic field they compress some of the magnetic field lines they elongate to the night side and they enter from the night side and they try to come along geomagnetic field lines when they come near here so this is called 70 to 80 degree latitude is called auroral oval i will again show you aurora this is a very interesting phenomena aurora formation of aurora in the scandinavian countries like sweden norway finland denmark and the southern hemisphere near the new zealand and australia and antarctica this shows that there is a solar connection and the same second second video will be solar filament i have shown you the diagram here how the filament will increases so particle coming from the sun spots will go above and the loops magnetic loops will rise slowly and slowly so these magnetic loops are rising slowly and slowly and they become critical dimension when they emitted and erupt it is called erupting map erupting prominences or erupting loops so these magnetic loops erupt and the plasma is released so the formation of solar flare occurs when there is a group of sun spot and plasma starts to rise and rise they go to the thousands of kilometer and they curl and twist when they curl and twist there is a magnetic reconnection and magnetic merging due to which they are not able to form and they are released so when they are released they emits lots of radiation in x radiation as well as they emits lots of particles so they are called formation of solar flare flares in just 5 minutes they are erupted and gives a large number of energy and this energy is sufficient to ignite the whole globe for several days and this is called coronal mass injection when here we have just just covered the solar disk to see the particles the particle of stream of particles are going all and this is the video is very interesting i will show you all to please focus there is a comet also so there is a comet also here this is the comet here is a comet it is coming and it is trying to enter the sun so there is a beautiful that two comets are here two comets you will see i will show you again there are two comets at uh, this so these two comets are trying to enter and this is a very interesting video of coronal mass injection and emission of the comets so this is the particle which is going whole earth system and whole solar system and that influence the soul here at earth and the aurora formation is a very, very good video so prominences are formed here the prominences are formed here plasma loops are formed here they are released when they released they go from sun to the whole solar system when they are emitted they are trying to go from sun to mercury and then they come to venus and earth and mars whole solar system when they are moving they influence the whole solar system so they are coming and they are moving when they come they also affect our satellites and the earth earth this is the magnetosphere which we have already discussed this is the cavity this is the magnetosphere cavity this earth is here center this is the day side this is the night side so the magnetic field covers and the particles coming from here a large number of particles they they interact with the magnetosphere they come from the night side they are trying to reach and in the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere they produce the aurora green aurora red this is the aurora display you can see suppose then sky becomes red sky becomes green sky becomes violet what happens these are called formation of aurora in the people of sweden and norway and finland in the evening they see the sky becomes green and the sky becomes red so this video is a very interesting video which shows the formation of aurora and this is the direct confirmation the solar wind particle entering the earth atmosphere when they enter the earth atmosphere they interact with the atomic oxygen and nitrogen and they produce auroral emission the transition of the line transition and this line transition is green band violet band and red band which is known as different colored of the aurora and it is a very interesting curling and folding and twisting i will show you some more videos and you will see the effect the whole solar system and this is the cavity magnetosphere cavity is here so they they enter from the night side day side and we are 
our life is safe here and these particles enter and they try to go inside the earth manatosphere and they come to the 70 degree north and 70 degree south this is the 70 degree to 80 degree north and they this reasons sweden norway finland people will see the aurora so i will show you some more aurora display so this is the aurora display from the vertical to the up you see how they are curling and folding and how they are moving and how they are dynamic blue violet green red different types of colors because the transition of different atomic oxygen and nitrogen will provide this aurora display so aurora is a very interesting so how, how uh, this is the aurora and how the effect of shift on communication we are using mobiles we are using tv we are using different communication all communications uh, we have to depend upon the different types of uh, signals these signals are affected by the space weather this is one of the important so i will video the person is uh, watching a video on tv this is the Madonna is giving the program and the satellite inside city satellite is transmitting its signal to the ground and we are enjoying the video. In the meantime, the large numbers of corona mass injection and solar wind particle has come. It all influence our satellites because satellites are near environment and they affect the solar panels, they affect the transmission and there is a phase lock loop which, which due to which the trans transmission is degraded transmission is disturbed and few minutes there is a phase lock loop which due to which we are not able to see our videos and after few minutes uh, when these particles will go out again transmission will be connected so this happens so there is a communication problem in our ionosphere the large number of plasma bubbles will be generated and this solar uh, solar wind particle space weather effects will affect our whole solar system our whole satellite system lots of current will be produced and blocks our signals so there is a very very effect on a space weather on communication so communication is degraded they also affect our satellite. You heard the story of a sky lab. A sky lab was falling down due to this space weather particle. So this is the satellite which is in moving in the orbit. It's an orbit. And when the solar wind particle comes, they produce the ED current on their surface. Their body will be damaged. Their solar panel will be damaged. And sometimes these particles turn their path. And their path will be changed. They go out of their orbit. And there is no control. And in rare cases like a sky lab, this satellite has entered in the gravity field of Earth and it starts to fall down on Earth. And there are several scientists have been, been uh, worried, but they have forced it to fall on the desert of Australia. So this is this is this is the effect of a space weather on satellites. So the space weather particles also affects our satellites. Their life, uh, their life becomes short. They will change their path, and sometimes the whole satellite may be out of control of the human and they may fall on the ground so this is the extreme effect of the space weather on satellites and they will see the different types of aurora here i am showing you different types of aurora display one of the aurora display you will see here beautiful aurora green aurora so this figure was awarded a best picture because it is a reflection of water also you will see so suppose the sky becomes green a sky becomes red like green this, this this is not a stationary they are turning and folding oh beautiful picture of the red aurora this red aurora and initially there was much that god is angry because the scandinavian people the schema people will see in the morning that sky in the evening the sky is red so they will surprise why god is angry but uh, in 1900 when the solar and solar wind particle was came to existence and scientists are able to find a connection that this is nothing but the solar par particle solar particle entered in the earth atmosphere and affecting our near earth environment so aurora red aurora green aurora is found so here i am trying to uh, just uh, this this slide will summarize the effect of a space weather you can see from top to bottom whole near earth environment affected by space weather a space weather is affecting our satellites i have shown you by video they affect our satellite our satellite will be burned our satellite will be changed their part they affect our astronauts because you heard about the kalpana chawla sunita williams and different scientists going going several days recently some scientist has gone to the international space station by so astronauts have to wear space dresses they have to go space walk they have to repair their satellites when they go out these particles will come and they influence their 
body. So their life and health will be in danger. Sometimes their DNA will be raptured and the life becomes very, very difficult. They have different types of cancer and diseases. So they affect our solar panels. They affect our technology. They affect our solar cell. So they will da damage it. They also affect the ionosphere. Ionosphere is a layer where ions and electrons are formed at from 60 kilometers to 1000 kilometers. So in ionosphere, the plasma bubble and ionosphere irregularity will be formed. So when this signal transmits, they have to pass through the plasma bubble and our antenna is not able to receive the signal and there is a <coughs> sorry there is a failure of the signal there is a degradation of the signal and this affects our communication system our aeroplane aeroplane depends upon the gps global positioning system and they affect our aeroplane aviation because they have to go for gps there is error in gps due to these plasma bubbles our cloud formation and rainfall will be affected there is a linkage with the cosmic ray and solar wind particle with the cloud and cloud formation and rainfall will also change they affect our cellular disruption the cellular transmission will be defect they affect our radio wave disturbance they affect our gps navigation the solar wind particle also affect the pipeline transmission different pipeline petrol pipeline diesel pipeline will be used and they produce erosion because there are different types of currents forms so pipeline erosion will be there earth system will be affected earth magnetic field will affect them there is solar magnetic field and the electric power transmission will be disturbed some electric signal will be disturbed so you can see our radar system will be disturbed so you will see that a space weather had a very good effect and it has a tremendous effect on upper atmosphere to the lower atmosphere within the earth system also so whole near earth in, uh, environment will be affected by the space weather so there is a need to study in detail the effect of a space weather and the awareness about the different uh, uh, people the researcher the students is needed to study the space weather as a full sub subject so we know that the solar cycle variation is there the number of sun spot varies along with the if years and currently we are going on the 25th cycle which has started in 2019 and 2020 25th cycle is going on and you will see that there is cyclic variation there is a maxima and there is a minima there is a maxima there is a minima and 11 year repetition here the so solar sun spot has a solar activity has a repetition after 11 year which is known as solar cycle variations so ionosphere as i have told you ionosphere is nothing but the ions and electrons covering the earth in different layers it has a different layer structure there is a d layer lower layer is called d layer then there is a e layer which hide what uh, from 60 kilometer to 100 kilometer then there is a f1 layer and f2 layer which goes to more than 1000 kilometer so you will see that in this side there is a e d layer e layer f1 layer f2 layer and height and the dominant ions no plus o2 o2 plus o plus they are dominant ions in different regions and their height distribution the height with the number of plasma and electrons you can see in the night side the night side some of the layer will merge because if there is no sun so there is there is no there is no production of particles is seen in the night side due to which you can see the night layer has a only f layer and e layer there is no other layers so day, day and night variation solar activity variation is also seen and in the ionospheric layer the geomagnetic storm i have talked about due to this the earth magnetic field will change due to a space weather our near earth environment will change the magnetic field of earth, earth is change you will see the day side it has compressed and night side it has elongated due to which there is a change in the earth magnetic field so this can be measured by the geomagnetic storm and the storm is measured by a index which is known as dst index that is disturbed storm time index which is known by the nano tesla here we measure the vert, uh, earth magnetic field the vertical magnetic field of earth which is known by the dst index when its value is zero it is constant when it becomes negative there is a large change in the magnetic field so there are different magnetometers by which all over the globe earth magnetic field is measured in india there is an institute which is known as indian institute of geomagnetics which headquarter is in new mumbai they measures the earth magnetic field in various places over india similarly all over the globe the earth magnetic field is measured and this dst index will this show how the magnetic field is changing earth magnetic field start to increase and they go down by very sharp increase so this is called the initial phase and this is called main phase here to here 
even after a few hours or a few days, the starch recovers slowly and slowly and it becomes to initial position. And this is called recovery phase, which lasts for a few hours to a few days. So here you will see, you see the geometric storm of 2015 of the March and it lasted from 17th March up to 25th March. So several one week uh, arithmetic field at this time. So there is a geomatic storm. This has a classification. We can classify geomatic field storm by a weak storm, a moderate storm, and intense storm, and super intense also. So weak storm varies from minus 13 in Tesla to minus 15 in Tesla when it go to the weak. When you go 150 to 100, which is called moderate. But when it go more than 100, here this is the intense storm. And when we go 250 or 30 and 4 minus 4. They become super. So different types of geometric storm is classified, and in the whole solar cycle, we can see the earth magnetic field really change. Here, I will show you the facilities available in the Department of Physics to study the space weather and different atmospheric phenomena. So, what are the different facilities at BHU, Banaras University Department of Physics? We have a very high frequency receiver. So, we have a Yagi antenna by which we receive the 250 fixed frequency signal and we record it also on the chart. And this is called chart recorder. And signals from 250 megahertz is, is recorded, which gives the fluctuation about the amplitude and phase of the signal that is the ionospheric irregularity. Second, we, we have a VLF receiver. VLF is a very low frequency receiver. We have a traditional receiver as well as Stanford University receiver. So we are able to measure the very low frequency signal that is 300 kilohertz to 30 kilohertz to study the D layer of the atmosphere. We have a GPS receiver and GNS receiver. We have a Trimbal receiver and we nearly we have a Storm Geo receiver which measures this 150 different channels. So continuous, this is the disk antenna and this is the receiver. We are recording the global position system at our department regularly. We have a L-band receiver that is the L-band frequency signal on the computer. So these are the study for the different space weather phenomena. We have a automatic weather station also to measure the temperature, wind velocity, wind direction, as well as the pressure and temperature at the surface. This is called automatic weather station. And the data for continuously measure for temperature and pressure on the near surface. We have automatic whistler detector. Whistler is a very important phenomena which is used to study the ionosphere and magnetosphere. There's a very interesting phenomena to know about the magnetosphere and the ionospheric properties, the electron density, the ion density. And we have a loop antenna. This is a loop antenna and the computer system by which we induce electric field and the different, uh, we have a diamond antenna and we are measuring the automatic whistler at Banaras University to study the different ionospheric elements of the We have a LIDAR. LIDAR is a light detection and range for atmospheric measurement and probing. So we send the laser 250 nano. So we send the nanometer signal, five, sorry, 530 nanometer signal green laser to atmosphere and we study the aerosol, the dust particle, the dust storm, the cloud properties and different uh, 20 kilometer to 30 kilometer height up to, up to. So low atmosphere boundary layer problem to the aerosol problem and the different cloud properties we studied by LIDAR. We have a pair of microtops. Microtop in other we have a sun photometer and ozonometer. Sun photometer has a five band here, five different wavelengths we are using to study the aerosol particle, the concentration of the column aerosol. We have a ozonometer. Here we study the ozone layer, the column ozone, the stratospheric ozone. Our aim is to study the stratospheric ozone at around 25 kilometers, 30 kilometers, the ozone layer. So day to day variability of the ozone, we are measuring continuous measure on the ozone layer we are doing. We have aerosol spectrometer to study the dust particle, different size particles. What are the different size particles of the aerosol? There are several other instruments which use. And recently we have installed a solar measurement and observation by a telescope. We have a recently installed in Department of Physics, a equatorial reflector telescope. So this equatorial reflector telescope is used to study the sun and its sunspot and property. This is a very interesting. We have a solar filter which uh, filters the ultraviolet, and we have a CCD camera to record by using the laptop and the software. This is the CCD camera, and we record the pictures beautifully 
high resolution picture and we have a scanning solar spectrometer to measure the spectrum range for 190 to 1100 nanoband nanometer band and we are able to do different experiments for msc students as well as the dissertation and the research we study the solar limb darning effect we are able to measure the sunspot and solar flares we are able to measure solar radiation spectrum solar rotation period we can calculate the solar rotation period we can study the property of solar eclipse recently in the last year uh, there is a uh, there is a annular solar eclipse occurred and by this using this telescope you have recorded beautiful images of the solar eclipse and lots of study has been done this is the full moon this is the solar spectrum so you can see the sun spot and the fine details of the moon so this telescope is a very interesting telescope which we use to study different properties of sun moon and the different solar wind as well as the sun spot and solar flares so here i will go you some result as i have informed already i will present you some result so uh, by using the global positioning system we are going to use to study the ionospheric phenomena in the ionosphere there is a plasma bob bubbles and blue blobs which is found in the d and e layer there is a fluctuation in the ionospheric electron density which is known as irregularity they are most dominant in the f layer and this is measured by the using gps and vhf scintillation so we are measuring the amplitude and you will see the signal amplitude fluctuates and this is recorded on the chart as well as the computer which provides about the shape size of the irregularity and the day to day variability of the irregularities and this will help to enhance the telecast and telecommunication so it is a very important so this is one of the result which is published in annals of geophysics so here we have plotted the time local time and here is the year 2009 to 2014 so here we have presented the six year plasma bubbles and this is the percentage occurrence maximum scintillation occurrence in each ascending phase of solar cycle 24 so you can see that after the sunset here this dominant dominance after the sunset the scintillation is formed maximum maximum except in 2012 most of the sunset is the after sunset the plasma bubble is formed and which shows that bubbles is a dominant after sunset when there is a production below of so plasma bubble will form and which will degrade the transmission so here we are seeing the <coughs> sorry effect of solar activity on scintillation occurrence so scintillation number and this is here so you will see that the 2009 this number of scintillation is less as we go 2019 2040 the number of occurrence is increasing this is the winter month and this occurrence will increase which shows that the sun activity is also increases so this is the blue blue is the bar is the plot of the sunspot number so sunspot number increasing it means solar activity increasing and similarly our scintillation occurrence will also increase so this says the solar activity increases the occurrence here in the equinox month the increase is most you will, you will see the maximum occurrence is found in the equinox month and in some month the occurrence is less similarly the scintillation is related with the flux. Here we have plotted with the solar flux. Here we have plotted the sunspot number. And here we plotted the solar flux. Blue is the solar flux. So here also there is a relation. When solar flux increases, the occurrence increases. So in the both the uh, sunspot number and solar flux production, which shows that there is a linear correlation with the solar activity, and which clearly shows that when solar activity increases, increases the scintillation activity increases so we have tried to sell the correlation analysis this is scintillation occurrence and this is the sunspot uh, number and we found the linear correlation so around 80 90 percent 89 point 89 60 so 90 percent correlation is r square is and here we also say when we plotted the solar flux for so different month different seasons and annual variation has shows that there is a linear correlation with the solar activity. When solar activity increases, the sunspot number increases, the solar flux increases, the plasma bubble will form last. So annual variation is shown here. In annual variations also showed a very good correlation of more than 95%. You can see there is a 95%, here is 97%. So beautiful correlation will be seen with the sunspot number as well as the solar flux in the whole year over the Varanasi. These are the different types of plasma bubble. So different shapes of plasma bubble. 
you can see they are constant they are very short period they are very long period they are very intense different types of plasma bubble you will see and you will see after sunset the plasma bubble is very large in the daytime there is a less number of present but in the night time after sunset the plasma bubble is very large and correlation i have already shown so we have also tried to study the magnetic activity so we have plotted five most quiet days and five most disturbed days and we found that during the five most quiet day and quiet disturbed days they are dominant with the disturbed days and quiet days and there is not a very good correlation will be seen with the magnetic activity we have tried to find their different property we found we have tried to find the characteristic length of this irregularity for which we have made the auto correlation analysis and power spectrum analysis so auto correlation analysis shows that the characteristic length will vary from 400 to 1200 so these plasma bubbles are intermediate scale and spectral index they follow the power law and the spectral index varies from 0.2 to 0.9 so our irregularities are the medium size irregularity intermediate size irregularity are formed over the varanasi we also studied the anospheric response to intense solar flare the solar flare has occurred the solar flare is the x class solar has a large variation in the solar flux by red line you can see the from 8 around 8 o'clock the maximum solar flux was this is the solar flux this is the time and solar flux is seen so we have calculated the different data and this is the gps data total electron content and total electron content has a large increase as soon as the solar flare has seen so as soon as the solar flux is seen the electron density increases and by the satellite we also measure the electron density and there is a increase in electron density at the time of solar eclipse so these all variations by different measurements have shown that when there is a solar flare there is a intense production and the particle will increase and this paper is published in the journal of physics there is a geomagnetic storm i have said you i have already shown you when there the ds this is the dst index when dst index goes low goes low there is a storm has occurred minus 120 nano tesla is seen and then it recovered in 3 4 5 days you have seen the solar and here is the solar wind speed solar wind speed from less than the 400 and it goes to 700 km per second so there is a large change in the solar wind velocity due to which the solar wind density has increased and due, due to which the electron density has a large increase so these increase in the electron density so shows that geomagnetic storm has occurred and geomagnetic storm affected our production in the ionospheric effect and there is a change in 25 taking it and by taking the total electron 46% around 46% increase is seen such enhancement could be storm induced wind lifting effect because electric field was too weak to so enhancement so this may be due to the wind lifting effect so another study we have done by studying the study of precursor leading to geomagnetic storm using artificial this is a very important and new technique by computer simulation by artificial neural network we can study one of my students have published this paper in journal of earth system sciences <laughs> and here what you have taken you have taken the solar data there are different solar data coronal mass injection velocity the coronal mass injection speed the solar flare class the magnetic field the electric field and the dst index and he has simulated and he found that there is a very good probability of around 79% the 80% probability of precursors of the geomagnetic storm this paper is published in the journal of earth system sciences and in this study which is published in astrophysics and space sciences we have analyzed the whole 11 year i have talked about the solar cycle 24 solar cycle occurs in 2008 and ended in 2019 so what we have done we have taken the 11 year solar cycle data and the solar flux the total electron contents by using gps and here in this plot you see the solar flux and this is the year and you will see the solar flux is increasing by this violet there is a two maximum and this is called solar maximum region and this is called solar minimum region and there is good increase so when we put analyze the total electron content using igs gps rii by model international reference of ionospheric model and tie gca model there are two model data and two measured data all have a similar variation 
with uh, some overestimate and underestimate. But most of data have a same type of tendency. When there is a solar maxima, the total atom content increases. When there is a minima, they have decreased. So this variation in GPS, RII, and DICGCM total return contains along with the solar flux shows that solar cycle has a maxima and minima. This so using different analysis, we have seen that there is a solar maximum and solar minimum variations can be seen. So now I'm going to conclude our today lecture. The space weather different influences the whole ionosphere overload attitude. All over the ionosphere, ionosphere or manosphere is affected by the space weather. The intense solar flare response of the ionosphere, they affect the D layer as well as the F layer of the ionosphere. Geometric storm enhances the total electron content with the particle total electron content. And this can be studied by the uniform tip effect and the storm induced effect. These enhancement in is produced by additional GPS positioning and navigational error. So there is a problem in GPS and navigational problem. Thus, there is a great need to understand the variability of low latitude atmosphere during so space weather. So a space weather events must be studied in detail. This must be studied by the scientists of Indian origin in detail because we are living in equatorial and low latitude region because they are affecting our whole sun system. So I want to acknowledge Indian Space Research Organization Ishiro for providing a fund and also I am happy that we have funded by the ISRO Space Science Promotion Scheme. SERB has given so much fund to study and we have to protect Earth. So I thank all of you for your patience and we have to save Earth. Space weather is affecting our whole Earth. So we have to know the science and technology of the space weather and the need of a study of a space weather is very important. Thank you. Thank you very much.